And don't get rid, don't think about getting rid of us. Think about helping us. I set out to interview homeless people to better understand the problem from their perspective, as well as to give them a chance to share their stories, thoughts, and experiences. Uh, so there's a lot of them on the streets, and, but some of them need help. One of the programs that are they need help uh, yeah. because they, they're not competent yeah. enough of the time. Maybe not. Maybe they are sometimes, but not enough of the time to be consistent and follow through on things that will help them. Daniel has been homeless for about eight or nine years, and he seemed to really know what he was talking about and has seen it all. He really appreciated the nonprofit charities and churches that helped the homeless. In my opinion, it was interesting that he also pointed out the faults of overinflated bureaucratic nature of state-run programs, as well as the fact that social programs have been cut and underfunded. Well, you're going to have the state entity, CAS, and that's what the cops, everybody tells you. Go to CAS, go to CAS. Well, CAS ain't for everybody. I'm not going to sit here and debate the pros and cons about CAS, but the further reaches of the valley, there's a, you're going to find an element of homeless people that will not go there for one reason or another, okay? Uh, and uh, they need their, their bureaucracy, man. Yeah. It's just like big government, too big. Yeah. You get a little grabs here, you get a little, you know, trim the fat. Well, you got that, and then you got clashes where they can't collaborate, different uh, charities, different yeah. entities. Uh, there's lots of different reasons. Lack of communication between That's them. one of them. That's probably a really great one there. I mean, you know, uh, yeah, they should network more, I think. Most liberals seem to want more social programs and bigger government while conservatives wish to cut what they call entitlement programs and reduce the size of government. However, it's more complex than that. I've always thought that we needed more well-funded social services as well as improving communication between government agencies and reducing bureaucratic inefficiencies. And so, Daniel, how long have you been homeless? Off and on for about the last eight years, nine years, going on nine years. Okay. Yeah, a long time. What's your, uh, what's your typical day like? Well, I don't sit around and wait for something to come to me. I go out dumpster diving, man, and I collect uh, metal, I collect cans. Uh, anything I pick up that's so good that somebody might want to buy. Uh, that's what I do, man, to fill the time, you know. Uh. Well, I'm born in Phoenix, Arizona, right here. It's my hometown. Uh, I don't really have anything to compare it to, though others say that it's a very unfriendly part of the country. Uh, I don't know, maybe it depends on your perspective, man, but I do feel that it is a little bit like the Wild Wild West still out here, you know, so. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, I just try to stay out of harm's way, you know what I mean? Um, especially trying to find somewhere to sleep that's safe Usually and around. that's not going to bother someone. It used to be the canal, but uh, uh, they cracked down on us over there. Really? Yeah, cracked down on us over there, too, so. It's amazing. They don't, they don't like, like people that don't have a place to sleep. Well, you know, in a lot of ways... We're outcasts. There, now, among our people, the homeless people, I would say, I'm one of them, uh, there's a bad element, and they give the rest of us a bad name. Uh, there's a lot of people that are uh, here for a lot of different reasons, economic reasons, uh, could be uh, emotional, uh, mental health reasons, uh, a lot of different reasons, just hard luck, man. Uh, but uh, there's a lot of them here that stay too, that can't rise above it uh, for one reason or another, you know? And uh, those are the ones I feel sorry for that really can't help themselves uh, as much as someone that has at least their wit left uh, can fend for yourself and survive, yeah. you know. But it's harder for them. They're abused. Uh, they're taken advantage of. Uh, they're exploited. Okay, they're forgotten. Uh, if they don't have somebody looking out for them, uh, they're uh, oftentimes fair prey to anybody who wants to uh, take advantage of them any way they want. Yeah. Uh, and those are the people uh, they're hurt the most down here, I think, and uh, they deserve some help too, you know. Now, a lot of times, uh, due to the laws in Arizona do, uh, about the people who are insane and what that involves, uh, they years ago cut a lot of it. Virginia was waiting outside St. Vincent de Paul's soup kitchen with her dog Cujo. She was more than happy to talk to me. My story is that um, I got here um, it, it, I wasn't supposed to come here, actually, but they brought me here. I was supposed to work, and it didn't happen like that, and I ended up out on the street, and I didn't know how to get any means for help or anything, because yeah. I'm not from here. I don't yeah. know where anything is, so nobody would help me. You know, I had everybody put me out, 
And at first, when I first got here, everybody was nice to me, and all of a sudden, bam, they yeah. changed their mind, whatever. So you found uh, St. Vincent de Paul here? Yeah. Too. Um, somebody finally told me about St. Vincent. Um, I've been going there for like nine, ten months out of the year. Uh-huh. People she was congregating with did not want to be on camera. One of them said that last time someone asked her to be on camera, they sexually abused her. Unfortunately, a lot of homeless people are abused physically and sexually for the amusement of sick, deranged people. I also found it interesting that Virginia has encountered people who choose to be homeless. She thought this was nuts. Oh, I like being out here. I like... <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I like the beach and all that. You know. Like, are a lot of them, like, veterans or some of them, like drugs or they just lost their jobs or oh well i think it's all all of the above uh, you know um it varies here different places some people don't do drugs yeah and they're out in the street you know some people do do drugs and they're out in the street. they're not in the street my name is daniel and uh daniel uh so you're out on the streets now right you lost your job yeah lost my job a couple days ago and now I'm having to fly a sign to make ends meet. What are you, what are you thinking about like, to do? Trying to get myself back into school, finish out and go to college, join the military. Yeah, what do you want to go to school for? Um, to be a mechanic. Oh, I'm from Indiana originally. And then I moved out here with my parents. I turned 18, my stepdad, me and my stepdad weren't getting along. So I moved out. And how long were you working at your last job? Um, I had it for about two or three months. Good luck to you, Daniel, and thanks for uh, speaking with us. Thank you. Daniel lost his job a few days ago and has no place to live. After talking to him for a bit, I realized how easily that could be myself or a family member of mine in that very same situation. I'm a college student who constantly gets pegged with overdraft fees. There were times where I was unsure whether or not I would have a place to live, let alone be able to afford finishing my bachelor degree. When I talked to Daniel, he lost his job because of the fact that companies would rather hire new employees than keep on an employee after a certain number of months that would require them to offer the employee benefits, give them a raise, and all those other things that normally a good company should provide for their workers. I found Benjamin on the side of the road. He was shaking from years of drug abuse. We both struggled to understand each other, but he was willing to talk about his life and experiences as best he could. He made some bad decisions when he was younger and got into drugs when he was about 18. And since then, he has been caught up in a cycle of homelessness and addiction. He has tried to get by without using or selling drugs, but selling dope is much more lucrative than gathering cans and whatnot. Benjamin Art. Okay, and what's your, what's your story? What's your, what, what's your background? What do you mean, baby? Well, where are you from? I'm from, um, Rockford, Illinois. Um, Rockford, Illinois. Okay. And I was born November 20th, 1970. Okay. And, uh, and you live out on the streets? Yeah. And so what, uh, how long have you been out on the streets? Quite a while. Uh, more than 20 years. Or something. Uh, do you think uh, places like St. Vincent, uh, St. Vincent de Paul help out a lot? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you uh, come here every day? Almost. Almost every day. Well, um, do you have any, uh, any thoughts? Uh, just any just uh, any open thoughts just about... Um, How to improve the situation or what do Yeah, just about your situation. And, uh, if I laid off some dope, I'd make a lot of money, but I won't make that kind of money if I'm not doing the dope. Mm -hmm. So it's a double-edged sword. Right. Kind of a catch-22 situation. Yeah, I like to say help more food, food kitchens or whatever, but, you know, it's dope. That's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. So do you, in order to make enough money, you, it's gotta, you got to... I have to have the desire for the product. When yeah. I was 18 years old, I remember doing what I was doing right now to make the money in the don't no have it. I was making 90 to to $100 in just a couple hours yeah. because as long as I covered that dope habit, uh -huh. 
But then when I thought, hey, look, I left the belt and do the same thing. No, I won't make the same kind of money. I'll be lucky to make five, ten dollars. Yeah. And my habit does exceed. It's like a double-edged sword. Yeah. So you're screwed either way. Homelessness is a real problem here in Arizona, and it deserves our attention, and we need more funding for and better communication between services and charities to help the unfortunate.